when I'm making content, the way I view it is content is an energy transmission. So you are making that person on the other side of the phone feel some type of way with your content. And that is what drives those quantitative KPIs that everyone's always talking about measuring like, oh, engagement and comments and likes and shares and followers, you know, all of that is driven by the qualitative factors. And that is how you're making someone feel because if they don't feel something, they're not going to interact with your posts. So I put all my time, effort and energy into cultivating my energy into a place that when it hits you on the other side of the phone, like you got to watch. Today's creator is Kat Norton, better known as Miss Excel. Kat is an online educator teaching Microsoft Excel. Her fun and engaging videos on TikTok have led her to reach almost 1 million followers. But even more impressive is her business sense. Kat has generated six figures in just one day by selling her Excel course on TikTok and other social media platforms. In today's episode, we'll dive deep into Kat's fascinating journey from her roots in the corporate world to her meteoric rise as Miss Excel and learn about her experiences in building a successful online training empire. Hi, Kat. How's it going? Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm very excited to have you for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is because you seem like such an energetic and outgoing person that I feel that this is going to be a great chat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you let us know a little bit about yourself and who Miss Excel is? Yeah, so my name is Kat Norton, or a lot of people know me on social media as Miss Excel, where in a nutshell, I make Microsoft Excel fun. So I create different training videos on the different Microsoft Office products, and I typically infuse them with music and dancing. And at this point, we're across all the social media platforms. That's incredible. And you've blown up as an you know, can I call you an Excel influencer? Yeah, I, it's 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 a thing now. It's a thing. Who would have thought? Let's start from the beginning. Before we get into all the amazing stuff that you've done, I want to just step back a little bit and talk a little bit about where'd you grow up? What kind of kid were you at, in school? How did you get into Excel? Yeah, I mean, so to take your way back, I grew up on Long Island in New okay. York. And I was definitely a shy and quiet, nerdy kid. I loved like playing The Sims. I was just like kind of off in my own little world a lot of the time, which is funny because when I went into my MBA program, the professor was like, raise your hand if you liked playing The Sims or like games like that growing up. And I was like, me. <laughs> and he was like, you're probably really going to like Microsoft Excel because it's oh. kind of a similar thing. It's a simulation. So it, it kind of all like came full circle for me in that moment. Right. But um, yeah, I was really just kind of geeking out on, you know, computer techie type things. My dad gave me my first laptop when I was like really little and nice. I would just hit the keys. I didn't know what I was doing. I would just like tap on the keys and I'll never forget. I used to get like so mad if I hit the caps lock key because I didn't understand what was going on. I'm like, why did all the letters change? And uh, yeah, that was really more of the childhood. And then I went to school for business, got my MBA as well. And that's really where my love of Excel first began was during the okay. MBA program. And because every class I took was Excel based. I didn't realize that when I signed up to be a data analytics major. And I ended up really falling in love with it throughout the way. So I'm assuming you had a regular job before you became yes. this Excel influencer. So were you known as the person that everybody wanted to, you know, come over for Excel tips? Can you fix this for me? Oh, uh, yeah. So I started off at a consulting firm straight out of college called Protivity. And cool. I was doing uh, securitization reviews for banks, which wow. is as fun as it sounds. And on the side of my day job there, actually, because I was getting so many Excel questions when people realized I was good at it. They were bringing me on to different jobs to support people with it. I built out an Excel training course internally for the company because it was something I was really passionate about. I also studied teaching in school as well. So I oh, went down cool. both like the teaching and the business path. And I was like, this kind of merges my two loves and it's a way to help all these people at the company to be able to work faster and be more efficient. So I did that as well for four and a half years. I was traveling around the US hosting Excel trainings for the company too. So what took you from doing your regular job to I'm going to start posting TikToks about Excel? Because I, I think if I'm not mistaken, that's where you started, correct? TikTok. Yes. So 
I started back in June of 2020. So oh, to man. rewind a little bit, by March of 2020, I found myself back in my childhood bedroom of my parents' house full time. Because wow. before this, I'd never moved out. I was buried in student debt and I was traveling every week for work. So Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday, I was on the road. So I'm like, it doesn't make sense to even try to move out at this point. But with the start of the pandemic, I was really back in my childhood bedroom. And I was like, ooh, I'm 27 years old. Like, what do I actually want to do with my life? And I was trying to think of different things I could do with the Excel side hustle type of idea. I'm like, okay, like maybe I could teach at different companies. Maybe I could build something out. And yeah. I'll never forget, I was on the phone with my best friend. She goes, what if you put the Excel tips on TikTok? And I was like, TikTok, you know, I'm 27 with a corporate job. I can't just make a TikTok. But my gut, like intuitively, it was like, make this TikTok. So I'll never forget, I opened up the app. I didn't even have it on my phone. Went to the app store, downloaded it. Started looking around and I was searching Excel and no one was doing anything with Excel on TikTok. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, do they just not like Excel on TikTok? Maybe it's the wrong audience or like, did I just think of something? And so I was like, all right. I'm gonna do this secretly. I'll make this secret TikTok. And so I grabbed the handle, Miss Excel. I didn't tell anybody I was doing this besides my mother and my boyfriend. And each day I started silently just posting one video because when she said it to me, I kind of had the vision of what it would look like. And I saw the Excel screen above my head and me dancing below it. And in this particular example, it was to that song, Toosie Slide by Drake, left foot up, right foot slide to the left and the right function. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I don't even know how to video edit. I'm going to, you know, watch some YouTube videos, try to figure this thing out. And I literally Googled like, easiest video editor and taught myself really quickly and was like, okay, here's how I can get the screen over my head. Let's see what it looks like. And the video looked really cool. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll actually post these. So I started posting one video a day. And by the fourth video, it gets 100,000 views. And I was like, oh. It starts getting pushed to all these people I know at work. I'm getting yeah. texts. I'm like, oh my gosh, help. And then by the sixth video, the CEO of an IT company reaches out and is like, hey, I love your teaching style. I'm looking to create G Suite training videos. So the Google version of everything I was doing for students, parents, and teachers, because this is when the schools were starting to go digital with the pandemic. And clearly I'm a Microsoft gal, but I was <laughs> like, you know, products are similar. I could learn those. So I taught myself that and proceeded to make videos and sell them back to this guy at night after my day job. And then I also was still cranking out the Miss Excel content too, because at that point it was lighting me up. I was having so much fun. So I was doing like hundred hour weeks for a minute there, just like kind of running all three, but the most of it, the brunt of it was actually still my day job. And uh, that's really how it all started. And then after three weeks, I had my first video go viral, looked at my phone, I had 100,000 followers <laughs> on TikTok. And then I added in Instagram and I kind of just kept going viral across the platforms until it grew to over a million people across them. That's incredible. There's so many threads I want to pull on there. The first one though is you said, oh my God, I'm 27 posting content on TikTok. I'm 40 posting content on TikTok, so it's okay if you're 27 posting content on TikTok. And number two is I had a similar experience where, you know, I was already big on YouTube, but not on TikTok. And like my fifth video got to a million views. And after that, I was like, oh my God, I got to keep posting on TikTok. And I've been feeding the beast ever since. And the question that I have for you is, how did you realize that the content you were creating was going to engage people or you just threw stuff up against the wall and see what stuck? I really just had the vision of what it looked like and kind of just ran with it. Like when she said it, I kind of just saw it. And like, I had never seen anybody do that before, like an Excel screen above your head with you below it. And like when I point, like the screen moves, like having it all like, you know, and I just saw it and thought it would be a really cool way to learn. So I just kind of went for it and it, it hit. Have you changed the way you create content now as opposed to back then? I know the algorithms are changing. I know there's, I'm assuming you have a lot more competition. I definitely have a lot more Photoshop competition on TikTok. So has your content evolved now to like the next level? 
Yeah, so I mean, I do switch up. Like I have some talking videos now. Like it was so funny. People had never heard my voice for the first year. People thought I was British. All of a sudden, <laughs> I like made a video. They were like, what? She's American. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I have some talking videos. I've done some like full screen Excel videos. I kind of just dabble with what feels right for the example and like what would make it the clearest for people. Um, yeah, just kind of have fun with it. I'm always experimenting, trying new things. Right. And I want to talk a little bit about the business side of it. Usually I don't ask people specifics with revenue, but I've seen a lot of numbers in different podcasts you've been at, at, you know, I think I've even seen an article by Forbes. I mean, you've been everywhere and I was looking at something and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw somewhere that in April of 2021 is when you had your first six figure month. That was two years ago. We're recording this in April. So two years ago, you had your first six figure month. And then in October 2021, you had your first $100,000 day. Yes. So two questions with that. Number one is, how did that change your personal life? And number two, most importantly, probably, what business lessons did that teach you that you still apply to this day for the rest of your products and content? Totally. So, I mean, from a personal perspective, it helped me get out of my parents' house and my childhood <laughs> bedroom, you know, because I, I grew this whole thing like in a tiny like I think it was smaller than 12 by 12 room I pushed all my furniture into a corner I made a little studio it was just like and my boyfriend was living with us too at the time so it was just like a lot of like you know stuff going on and so like the first thing yeah it really helped us um travel so we became digital nomads for 16 months trying to figure out where we wanted to live and then we ended up buying our dream home in Sedona, Arizona. So that was a really cool big part of like actually getting revenue in with the business and the margins are insane. So it was, we were able yeah. to kind of just keep scaling it pretty easily because there's really no overhead costs. Um, and then I ended up hiring a team too, which was really nice. I have a few, we have a small but mighty team yeah. uh, with a few of us and that helped free up a lot more of my time because at first I was doing customer service for like 15,000 students and that became a lot, you know? So, cause I answer every Excel question they have. So I ended up um, expanding the team, which was nice. And I mean, business lessons coming out of it, really the biggest thing for me was learning how to sell. And luckily, my boyfriend was the number one ranked sales rep in North America at Enterprise. Wow. So I got him to join my team. And we've both been working together for over a year now. So he leads our corporate division. And he also taught me how to sell. And what does that mean, taught me how to sell? Like, what did you learn? Can you give me some specifics? Yeah. So I started doing webinars. And okay. that is a really awesome way to sell courses. So basically, I host a free Excel class. I give you a power pack 45 minute Excel class. Like people leave transformed. And then at the end, I'm like, hey, if you want to keep learning with me, like I give you an awesome deal on the courses. And that's typically where tons of people jump on. But I really kind of learned how to like speak and how to sell and how to, you know, do things in a way where it felt really authentic to me and it didn't come off like salesy, you know? And so, you know, getting down that process because I've done over 50 webinars now. Wow. So like I started just really honing into my craft. And then, you know, the last like six months, we've been really like getting into more of tracking and automating and things like that to really just amp up the process, which has been cool. Yeah. And it sounds like you do the live webinars. It doesn't sound like you're doing the fake it, you know, no. it's, it's not really live and people think that it is. So I'm glad to hear that you're doing it live because one of the things that I've heard you talk about, I think it was in another podcast or maybe one of the articles that you have been a part of, but it sounds like you view content creation as energy transmission. Yes. And I heard a lot about your philosophy on a lot of these things, and I never really thought about it in, in that regard, but it makes so much sense. So can you talk a little bit about your philosophy and how that translates over into your work? Yeah, so I spend a lot of time working on myself because whenever I want the business to grow, I don't work on the business, I work on me. Because if I'm able to energetically hold the abundance and everything coming through, then the business is able to grow. Because for example, like oftentimes I go viral in the media and what happens in those cases is like I can like energetically tell in my body when I am going viral in the media. Like I can tell when something's all of a sudden like my eyes will start twitching or like my nervous <laughs> system starts glitching out or I start getting like anxious because 
when there's millions of people pointing their attention on you, it starts to like glitch out. And that's where I'm like, okay, I need to meditate. I need to work on myself so I can grow to that next level and hold that. So every time that happens, I'm like, yes, okay, we've reached a new level. I'm starting to glitch out here. And then I go in and work on myself. So I do a lot of like yoga, meditation retreats, things like that to kind of expand my energy so I can hold everything because my business has kind of been like a giant game for me to see like yeah. what I can do, how many people I can help and how easy the process actually can be. Right. So for example, my whole business has been a series of inbound leads. So I've never had a PR person. I've never reached out for press and I've been in 50 global news outlets from Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine, all the things. Same thing with like corporate deals. And I just have like all these businesses constantly reaching out and like filling my inbox. And then now we have my clothes and the deals. But like, it, it's one of those things where like I came into the business being like, okay, I'm just going to keep expanding myself and what I can energetically hold. And then that's kind of how the business goes in and grows without me having that energy of like reaching. Like I need, I need, I need. I kind of removed that from the way I run the business. So then that also ties into content. So when I'm making content, the way I view it is content is an energy transmission. So you are making that person on the other side of the phone feel some type of way with your content. And that is what drives those quantitative KPIs that everyone's always talking about measuring like, oh, engagement and comments and likes and shares and followers, you know, all of that is driven by the qualitative factors. And that is how you're making someone feel. Because if they don't feel something, they're not going to interact with your posts. So I put all my time, effort, and energy into cultivating my energy into a place that when it hits you on the other side of the phone, like you got to watch. Or you're right. even, I have a lot of people who don't use Excel who still watch my content because I do a lot of work behind the scenes to make myself come off like radiant or magnetic or like in a way where I'm just comfortable and authentic. And then that makes people want to watch. Cause like a lot of times if you're going through social media and someone looks kind of like uncomfortable or like, you know, you want to tell, like your yeah, subconscious yeah. can tell when something is wrong 100%. or if something is off. And it's not natural for most people to show up on camera feeling super authentic. You know what I mean? Like we all are, but then when you get on camera, a lot of times people are like, Eek, you know, yeah. so myself included. So I've had to do a lot of work on myself to get myself to a place where I can show up the way I am now. Also, what does that camera. type of work look like? Yeah, so I do specifically a lot of kundalini yoga meditation. So that's breath work, it's mantras, it's mudras. Because for me, like doing the whole like, let's sit down, close our eyes and think about nothing. My brain is like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I'm like a type A person. <laughs> so for me to like get my brain clear is so hard. So for me with kundalini yoga, you're saying a mantra. Your hands are in a certain way. Your gaze is in a certain position. Like when you're staring at the tip of the nose, it's activating your frontal lobe. It works at different parts of the brain. When you're saying the mantra, you're tapping the roof of your mouth that activates different parts of your brain. So it's like this whole yogic science, essentially, that I started studying. And I there's certain mantras and meditations for different things. So that's a way for my type A brain to kind of hop offline and be like, all right, we're focusing on this. We're focusing on the tip of the nose. We're focusing on the movement, you know? And so that's something I do a lot. I also just make sure I'm doing things that I love before I record the content. I call this a mood boost. And it looks different for everybody, but for me, I love to dance. So I will like blast some music, jump around, get movement through my body because that'll create more energy in the system. And for other people, it's, you know, walking outside, get grounded in nature, pet your dog, like doing something right before you make the content or you have the appearance to give you that like 10% boost, like just like topping yourself off, like getting yourself to your spot where you're like feeling so good. Because when you feel really good, and you're projecting that, the person on the other side of the screen can't help but smile. And the best part is when you're teaching something, Andy can make somebody smile on the other side. That's really where they're getting a lot out of it and they're kind of zoned in, they're paying attention and they're getting awesome content. I 100% agree with everything you said. The challenge for certain people like me who are natural, you know, state is down here. I am so calm and so relaxed and I'll record a video, do a TikTok, I'll watch it and I'll get that feeling that you talked about, which is like, yeah, I, I look weird. I look uncomfortable. I need to go out. I live uh, across the street from a Starbucks. I can make coffee at home, but I'd rather walk across the street, you know, so I can put on some clothes, freshen up, 
feel good, talk yeah. to people. By the time I'm back and I redo it, I feel so much better. Yes. And I never put it into those specific words like you had never made that connotation. So I'm glad you brought it up because now I'm going to have to physically try to make that change prior to recording because it is it does make a difference. Another thing I want to say is I had a, a friend, her name is Kelly McCatherine, and she used to record basically what I did, Photoshop and Adobe tutorials for Adobe and other different places. And she always smiled when she recorded. And even though I couldn't see her face on screen because it was a screen share, I knew she was smiling. And it's crazy how that translate over. Even if you can't see it, you can definitely feel it. So you're absolutely right about that. I was just about to say, that was what I was going to say to you, make sure you're smiling. Because yeah. it, it just, that's what I do too when I'm teaching. I do like corporate Excel trainings for companies. And I'm always like every like 30 seconds, my brain goes, make sure you're smiling, make sure you're smiling. Because like, I am happy on the inside, but you got to make sure it's like, you yeah. know, like bringing that across. And when you're teaching something like Microsoft Excel, a lot of times people can get like swept up in the weeds mm -hmm. of it, or they might be overwhelmed yeah. over there. So if you have someone with a friendly smile looking at you in the camera and being like, it's okay, we're going to click sell A1. You know what I mean? It definitely just changes the vibe. A hundred percent. Are there any people that have come out and reached out to you and say, hey, I'm an expert in blank. Can you help me become, you know, Mr. I don't know, you know, weed whack or whatever. I don't know, farming or something, anything. Are people reaching out saying, how can I do what you do, but for blank? Yeah, so much all the time, which is like where, you know, I, I haven't officially started like a business coaching practice. I've done mm -hmm. it, you know, for my friends for fun sure. over the years. Most of my friends, it's always this joke. If you hang out with me too much, you quit your day job. Because <laughs> I end up yeah. helping with start businesses. But what I decided to do, which I'm launching either in May or June, Ooh. is creating a membership around this. Mm. And it's not just for entrepreneurs and people starting on, on the coaching side, you mean not the Excel side? Yes. So this is okay. a mindset membership. Okay. Because I've had so many people reach out, even like people who aren't starting a business. Like if you're at your corporate job and you just want to feel better and feel happier in your day and be more optimized and kind of like learn, it's really just like hacking your mind, you know, and learning these different techniques. That's something I've been talking about since like day one when I started the business. Everyone's like, how'd you do it? I'm like, I shifted my mindset. And even most more so than Excel. I am passionate about this and I've been just kind of waiting for the right time to launch something. But I've been working on building out a platform with like master classes where you meet with me live and all different really cool fun aspects and tools for people to shift their mindset wherever they're at. So that's something I'm going to be building out in the future to kind of help people in that area because I get literally every day I'm getting like emails from people being like, your story was so inspiring. I want to do it for this. And like, I want to be able to help everybody on like a bigger scale. Can you share a story maybe of somebody that you've helped that reached a level of success that they weren't expecting? Totally. So, I mean, literally just this weekend. So my best friend teaches yoga okay, and she had quit her corporate job and has been building out a business. And literally just the last three days, we came off a yoga retreat and mm -hmm. my boyfriend, Mike, and I just sat with her for three days, building out sales funnels, webinar funnels, mm. building out the site, building out the products, building out the sales pitch. We all just all hands on deck. And she's doing her first webinar on April oh, 30th that's amazing. on meditation. I'm so excited. And yeah, it was just like the best feeling having her literally like walk in with like the ideas and leave with a well-oiled machine. It's incredible. And that's where I was like, dang, like if I just did this for a living too, like I'd be able to help so many people, but I also still love my Excel business. And I do, you know, a lot of corporate events and things that do take my time. So it's, I want to do it all, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally get that. Day. <laughs> I totally get that. I didn't need to start a podcast, but I started a podcast. I didn't need to, you know, I, one of the things that I do is also, um, I'm a finisher for the Hollywood industry. What that means is I create movie posters that, you know, you might see in the movie theater or you might see like on Netflix, the thumbnails and all that. Wow. I didn't need to do that. I, yeah. I'm i fine with my training business. There's like 30 things that I do and I don't need to do any of them. Maybe, you know, I obviously need to do some of them to, to put yeah, yeah. food on the table, but um, I definitely don't need to do the 30 things that I'm doing. I just can't help myself. I'll hire more people to help me with this so I can have more time to work on that, you know? Totally. Where does that motivation and that passion help help others comes from? I've been 
this way my whole life. Like an example that I always tell people, I was like that weird kid in middle school where mm-hmm. if there was a test coming up, I would build out this beautiful, colorful study guide mm-hmm. and then print out copies for everyone in the class and like hand them out <laughs> to all the other kids. Like I was always just trying to help people with this stuff and like use my creativity and like build resources for other people. And that was like, I thought back on that. I was like, dang, I guess I've always been like this. <laughs> so I kid, like, here's a study guide and people were like, what? <laughs> but that's great. It helped you learn and yeah. they were, they passed the test because of you. Yeah. <laughs> You know what happens to me when I started um, when I started teaching Photoshop? I started teaching Photoshop in 2011, wow. and I actually became a much much better Photoshop user than I already was because I realized that for me to easily explain something, I really needed to understand the concepts. I couldn't just wing it, you know, or say, "Oh yeah, this kind of works like this." No, yeah, like yeah. I needed to know exactly how it worked so I can properly explain it in a simple manner. Did that happen to you that you're a much better Excel user now than you were in the past? Totally. Because like a lot of it too, like grew through experience being in the consulting field. So Mm -hmm. when I was doing the securitizations reviews for five years, every week I would fly to a different state to a different company and I would be in a different spreadsheet with a different Mm. business model. So I every week was seeing a new company spreadsheets. I was keeping tabs on what they're running into, (laughs) where are the mess ups in their spreadsheets. My job was literally to review the mechanics of an Excel spreadsheet and make sure that they were correctly capturing the securitizations. And so I was just seeing like all different types of companies from like CLOs to like, I was out in Reno at like a vending machine company, like just all (laughs) different types of companies. So really taking that into play and then figuring out how to best teach it. But having that experience was really where I would was able to teach a skill, but then I can tell you three different ways I've seen Mm -hmm. that you can apply Mm -hmm. it. And that's what gets the gears turning for people. That's where it's like, okay, she taught me how to do a flash fill, but oh wait, here's where I can actually use the flash fill. And bridging that connection is such a big part of teaching versus just showing the mechanics of something. Mm -hmm. So that's really where my experience in that has helped. And then now teaching at so many different Fortune 500 companies, I like see all their different things too. And like they give me mock data to build custom trainings. So I'm able to kind of keep seeing how different companies use the different products. Is that fun for you coming into a place and saying, hey, check this out. Can you help us? And you're like, yes, challenge accepted. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love doing Excel trainings live. We have like 60 minute corporate sessions and they're just a good time too. you know, we, we make sure that they're fun. They're upbeat. We give them training workbooks to walk through, too. It's a really good experience. Do you do these on your own or do you have people working with you in these training experiences? It's all me. They get me live <laughs> on screen. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. And in terms of content creation now, if you were to start today having your knowledge, would you do anything different or what would be different if you were to start out today? I mean, at this point, I think it was all just my destiny path to do it the way that I did it. Like, obviously, the platforms have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. I definitely now after time have more of an omnipresence approach. But I do think if I started off on six platforms, I would have gotten overwhelmed, like trying to keep up with all those. Now I post on all of them each day. Um, But so I just stuck with one until it went viral. Then I added in another and another, you know, and kind of just did it more gradually. So I really built the business around the lifestyle I wanted to have. I didn't want to build something that was going to drown me where I was going to be working like 60 hour weeks again. I was like, I want to be doing something where I can live my life now and travel and do things and have fun. Like it's all about the journey, you know? And so I didn't want to do something where I'd be completely buried. So that was that was one of my things in growing the actual business was I kind of built it around the lifestyle I wanted. I think that's incredible because I feel that a lot of people are too much about the grind, maybe myself included. There's something about that, the grind that some people enjoy, which again, <laughs> I'm a victim of this. And it's interesting to hear your perspective about putting your life first and not the grind. And I would assume that that has to do a lot of with the self-reflection that you do, the meditation, all this stuff that I never do. So perhaps I need to start doing it. Totally. Because for me too, like the happier I am and the more Mm -hmm. energetically aligned I feel, that's when I'm getting like the huge opportunities out of nowhere landing in my inbox. If I'm two heads down and I feel stressed, energetically, I'm at my capacity. My cup is full. New things don't come in. So I always work to kind of leave that space. And then that's where like 
like I couldn't have even predicted how big the business was going to grow and how quickly yeah. I can't even predict what it's going to do in the future right. because literally like an email tomorrow could shift the whole trajectory of it. And that's kind of how it's grown. Like on mm -hmm. day six on TikTok, did I expect the CEO of an IT company to reach out, <laughs> give me a side hustle? Then I start getting income. Did I expect to go viral? Did I expect, right. you know, Microsoft to reach out and for me to start working with them? Like it, it was all different things I couldn't have even predicted. So right. that's kind of where I make sure I'm happy and I'm the best version of me to the best of my abilities. And right. that leaves the room for the magic to happen, the cool things, the things you can't predict or plan for. How do you think you had the courage to take on these opportunities? I feel that a lot of people may hear that opportunity knocking on the door, but they don't answer the door. What led you to answer the door and say, screw it, I'm going, I'm doing this? Yeah, so I mean, the way I view entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship is taking the bet on you. And if you sit down at the end of the day and you're like, I know that I will not stop, I will not give up until I get where I'm going, I'm confident saying yes to any deal because I know that you know if I will sit and put in the time and put in the effort, I know I'm smart enough to do it. I'm like, it, it's really just a confidence game, right? It, it's really believing in yourself because so many people will just stand in their own way. And I was included in that. I was very like, shy, soft-spoken, like even in the corporate space, I was a total perfectionist. I had imposter syndrome. I wouldn't raise my hand and answer something unless I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was right, you know? 100%. And that's really where now the way the business grew so quickly was because I took messy action. Even yeah. in building my first course, I had that thing out in two weeks right. because I was like, you know what? Like everyone wants this. I'm going to take two weeks off from my day job, focus, 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 build this thing out and just trust and then people loved it and i was like whoa yeah. i'll do it again rinse and repeat i built out nine more courses over two months and it was one of those things where it's really just coming down to believing in yourself and then if you're feeling that there are limits in front of you that are stopping you from fully betting on you that's where we get to kind of shine a light on that blind spot and work through those limiting beliefs. And there are so many different tools out there from like inner child work, subconscious reprogramming. I just did a lot of work on myself before I started the business, mm. which I think made it easier because yeah. instead of standing in my own way like I normally would, I wasn't anymore. Like I'll never forget, it was April of 2020. I didn't start my business till June. I came out of my childhood bedroom after doing these 20 minute meditations every day where I was like going back to my inner child and like, reframing different events that happened that were currently playing out now mm -hmm. because of the conditioning I had. And I was like, mom, I'm going to be rich and famous soon. So I need you to prepare <laughs> your nervous system for that. And oh she was my like, God. Kathleen, go clean your room. You know, just like, what are you <laughs> saying? But I was like, mom, something big's about to happen. You know, and I like went off into my room and then like, I didn't even have a business idea yet, but just right. every cell of my body was prepared for something big. You know, right. and then the second I tried, everything kind of just started moving fast because I was no longer standing in my way. Another great example, I was scared of the ocean. I was scared of the ocean my whole life, would not swim. I wouldn't go in past my knees. I got tumbled once as a kid and was like, oh my gosh, the ocean is dangerous. I'm not going in there. I decide to book a surfing and yoga retreat in Morocco in 2019. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna overhaul my system. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna get on a surfboard and I'm gonna try. And I ended up loving it. And that's where I had a revelation. I was like, oh my gosh, I could have gone my whole life without going in the ocean because I quote unquote, didn't like the ocean, was scared of the ocean. And instead I ripped the bandaid off. I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and now I love it. And now I'm like living in Laguna Beach and we go in the ocean. It's just like, I, I could have like wrecked that part of my life if I didn't actually challenge myself and like have the notion that our limiting beliefs are all malleable. That's what a lot of people don't realize too is like, all our limiting beliefs and our conditioning is reprogrammable. We don't have to be like, I am the way I am for the rest of my life. Like, it's not true. And like, I, I was shy with a massive anxiety disorder and now I dance on TikTok for a living, you know? <laughs> like, it, it, there are tools out there that we can use to clear this stuff up and feel like our authentic selves. And like, I've never truly been happy until I did those things. I had happy moments, but I wasn't comfortable in my own skin until now. So I think that's just like, if anyone gets a message out of this, who's feeling some type of way about themselves, like just know that there are tools out there and it doesn't right. have to be that way. A hundred percent. And I'm not going to go too deep into it, but I basic, everything you just described exactly my story as well. Really? I was a little older than you though. I was, I was 
I was still 27 when I used to work at the mall. I didn't have a career. I didn't even have a car. And I remember that um, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and there's a train system called the BART. And I was riding the BART and I just remember leaning my head up against the window. And I just felt so sad and so depressed. I'm like, I'm 27 years old, working at the mall. I, you know, like, what future do I have? And I, and like, I had all these, as you mentioned, limiting beliefs that, you know, it wasn't going to happen. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I also had that, I know that I could do, like, I know I have it in me to do something. And, you know, when I was about 32, I think, is when I started doing what I'm doing now. Wow. And, you know, fast forward till now, and, you know, I have a YouTube channel with almost 2 million subscribers. I've spoken at over 30 conferences worldwide. I, I, oh my, this is the craziest thing. I won one of the 40 under 40s. Obviously, there's 39 others. So 40 under 40 for my university, considering I had like a 2.5 GPA in school. I was a terrible student, but it was all mindset. So I am 100% with you on that whole mindset mentality. I used to be a very shy kid. Still, I'm naturally, I'm still very shy, but I can, you know, kind of shake it off if I need to go on stage. Yeah. I also used to be a soccer coach. I played soccer in college. And then after college, I went and coached my high school team. And I used to be terrified, terrified at coaches and parent meetings when I had to speak to a room of like 10 parents. Like I would shake and I would stutter and, I, you know, I would look down and I would just be so terrified. And now the biggest stage I've ever spoken in was probably about 5,000 people in Guadalajara, Mexico. So, wow. you know, it, it's crazy how when you change your mindset or you not even change your mindset, you you decide that you're going to try, just try, try to push, you know, a little bit. It, it, you'll be surprised as to how far you can push. Wow, that's such an incredible story. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And you know, like this podcast is obviously not about me. <laughs> so I, I love gonna, hearing it. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm going to switch it back to you. And I want to get back onto the business side because there is something really big happening right now in the US, which is TikTok might get banned. Two questions. Number one is, what are your thoughts and feelings about that? And number two is, are you starting to prepare? What's plan B? I mean, my business isn't really run with TikTok anymore at all. I did start there, but sure. like we started doing tracking on sales. Not much comes from TikTok to begin oh, with. Wow. So it's not really going to impact anything. Um, but I mean, it is good. Like if you are a creator, if you're posting, you know, on TikTok, like only or editing in that app to make sure, you know, you have your videos saved down mm -hmm. and things. If you ever did want to repurpose them. Sure. I do an omnipresence approach. So I edit everything off the apps. So I already yep. have like all my videos and mm -hmm. everything. So, I mean, obviously I don't want TikTok to go away. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, we have an awesome community on there. It's almost over a million people. We're getting close wow. to a million on there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's really an awesome place, but we'll see what happens. It's wild. I just hope it stays, you know, we won't get political on the show, but I just think that a lot of the representatives in the U S are really not listening to what it seems to be most, what most people want, but that's just yeah. my, my humble opinion. So what's next for you, Kat? What's your next biggest goal? I know you mentioned the coaching, but is there anything else? Like where are we going to see mix Excel in five years? It's oh, a yeah. five-year plan. I mean, listen, five years, who knows? Because <laughs> everything just is so, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I feel like just I couldn't have even predicted where I am now two years mm -hmm. ago because things move so quickly. But like short term right now, I'm currently building out a course on AI to go under Ooh. my Miss Excel umbrella. Mm -hmm. And because I was thinking about it and really I help people use technology to be more yes. efficient at work yes. and in life. And that really does fall under that umbrella. And in polling my audience, I was realizing there is definitely a knowledge gap mm -hmm. going on between like the current tools that are out there and like how they can be using them. And I absolutely love technology. So I've been studying this for a while too. So I'm building out an AI course. My plan was AI April and then <laughs> launching Mindset May and building out wow. my Mindset membership in May. So we'll see how I can work on the timing here because I do have like conferences and stuff coming up. So I am traveling quite a bit the next few sure. weeks. 
But um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to finally have a product around mindset because mm-hmm. I've been getting asked for this for years and I wanted to make something super accessible, super affordable, but packed with tons of different master classes and workshops live with me where we could talk through things. And mm-hmm. like, I get emails all the time too, like what book should I be reading? Like, you right. know, like I wanna just make this toolkit of all different things that can help transform mindsets and really just get people inspired. What would be the perfect person to join this particular training? So, I mean, it's really anyone who's looking to work on themselves. Okay. So anyone who is sitting there right now, and if you're like, you know what, Kat, I don't feel like I'm 100% my highest self right now. Mm. If you're like, I feel like there's room to go, and I'm willing to kind of check out what's out there. Because I feel like a big part, too, is people don't realize there are so many different tools that we could be using And there's so many different concepts that we could be learning to help us expand our mindset and to help us actually just feel happier every day. Like my entire outlook of my life has changed dramatically. And in changing that, my actual reality has since changed as well to match that. Like, for example, when I first started working on this stuff, I was living in my childhood bedroom, my parents' house. And Mike and I literally used to sit in the trunk of his car and like drive around, just eat in the trunk of the car because we're both living in our parents' houses. And we're like, where do we even (laughs) go around here? So we'd be like eating in the trunk of the car, like sitting backed up to the beach. And we were so happy. And I was just like, because we were constantly reading books and studying all these different concepts. And then I obviously became obsessed with it, went down a rabbit hole and started studying essentially how the mind works. Mm -hmm. and why we think the way we think and how we could change these things and working on things like reducing stress, confidence, reducing anxiety, things like that, and really taking my journey of the things I've done and kind of building out a platform around it and just seeing how that changes people's lives. Like I've had like podcast episodes where people have like taken something I've said and just ran with it and changed their Mm -hmm. lives. So I'm like, what if I had something where I just take everything out of my head and put it into something where it could really help people and where they could connect with each other too. There's gonna be a whole community aspect as well. Cause so many people are like, I want more high vibe friends or I want people who get it or I want people I could talk to about like the cool books I'm reading, the things I'm Mm -hmm. learning. So I wanna have like a whole community aspect too where I can connect people together. So I've heard you say the word happiness several times in that response. What does happiness mean to you? Happiness is really just feeling good. And like, it's kind of like a pure feeling, if that makes sense. Like, I remember my happiness used to ride on like everyone around me's happiness. Like I was always overthinking. Like, I was like, I wonder how they're feeling right now. Like, are they mad at me? Like, what are they doing? You know what I mean? Where for me, happiness is in like the quiet, pure joy. Okay. Like it's in those moments where I'm just like, wow, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful for what's happening. Like so much love is in my heart, like as cliche as that sounds. Like, and I do, <laughs> I do a lot of gratitude practices. Like every night before I go to bed, I'm like thinking about what I'm grateful for. And I'm also doing like segment intending as a teaching from Abraham Hicks, where you can intentionally segment out your day and what you want. So essentially creating a little roadmap for a subconscious mind to go in and filter for us. Like I, I geek out on all this stuff, but like, no, I it, love it's it. really like, you know, it, it's happiness is that like the pure joy, bliss moments where you're truly in the moment too. You mentioned gratitude. And one of the things I started doing is I started saving emails and comments they were grateful and not just a simple thank you it was more like a paragraph that showed that the person really appreciated the content that i created for them um one in specific which was really it was really touching for me was that a gentleman reached out emailed me and he mentioned that he had unfortunately lost a hand to an accident and that photography was his therapy and that my videos were helping him with his photography and he just wrote me this big long message about how he was just really grateful that I put out content that he enjoyed and he could just you know practice his photography and his photoshop just to help him get over the the hand accident and I was like oh my god that's like I never thought I would be helping anybody get through something like that by posting a photoshop tutorial And those are the kind of messages that I've saved because I'm sure as you know, when you put stuff online, you are going to get a certain percentage of negative mean comments attacking you. And, you know, you're like, bro, this is a Photoshop tutorial. This is an Excel video. Like, why are we attacking people? You know, and I needed to create 
a little a little folder that I could just scroll through every now and again whenever those negative feelings start taking over. It kind of helps me stay a little grateful and motivated to just keep going. Totally. I have the same thing. Testimonials folder. Yeah. I was actually going through it this morning because my ads team <laughs> needed new testimonials and I was like going through it. I was like, oh, that's a great yeah. idea to like go through this. Yeah, because if you just go through like the live comments, there's going to be mean ones, you know, oh, yeah. and I don't know how you feel about this, but when I started in YouTube back in 2011, I did the mistake of arguing with people online, oh. which is the worst thing you can do for a lot of reasons. Number one is you don't know who you're arguing with. It could be a child. It could be a 10 year old. So why am I wasting my time with a 10 year old? Clearly, that person's already having a bad day. You know, I should just say, sorry, I'm so sad you're having a bad day because if they're having a good day, they're not going to take the time to write a mean comment to you. Yeah. And also, how does that make me look in front of my audience if I'm arguing with, you know, something dumb? So now, to be quite frank with you, if it's something really, really mean, not not a criticism, because it's OK if I if somebody feels that I did something wrong and they have their way of doing it fair, that's fair. But if it's a plain attack. I just deleted that there's oh, yeah. no, you know, interaction. I don't want to have that energy on me, you know, and you were talking about it earlier. People in situations like us, we're getting a lot more input from the world than a normal human being is designed to <laughs> intake. And I just don't want to have that negativity in my space, you know, so I just get rid of all of that. And that was one of the biggest things that I had to learn doing the type of work that I do is how much input is put on us and how much that affects us. It took me a long time to figure that out. Totally. It, it ties back to the law of polarity. I remember my friend teaching me this like really early on because I was like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I'm getting more mean comments. But then if you think about it, typically 30% of people are going to love everything you do, no matter sure. what. Like 30% are just going to hate everything that you do. And then you got the population in between. Yeah. And the bigger the pools grow... The more negative, the more positive. We live on a polarity planet. So like these things will happen. And I kind of just came to terms with that. Um, and then I never give them any attention to, yeah. which is, yeah, because it's law of attraction where your energy sure. goes, more of it will grow. So I always, you know, just bless them in my head because they typically need more help than I <laughs> sure. do. If you're spending sure. your day like writing, stop dancing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, right. and you just I like I try to actually send them a lot of love, like energetically. Yeah. Like I look at the comment and be like, I hope they find what they're looking for. And like, I hope right. they're able to clear out whatever, because everyone's just seeing what you do through their own perception and through their own yes. lens. And oftentimes, even me just existing triggers people like seeing this woman out there running a business, making money. She doesn't work that many hours. Oh my gosh, I work so many hours and I don't make that much money. And like people get these like narratives in their head and then they'll like spew them at me where I just kept having to learn with my energy field. Like if I want to keep living the life I want to create, I just have to keep being me and just like not letting the things kind of get to me and just keep working on myself because the bigger everything grows, the more people are going to do things. And like everyone's just seeing it through their lens where I have other people who are like, wow, I saw Kat did that. That means I can do that too. And that jumps them 20 steps. Some people will get offended by just my existence and yeah. other people will be like, oh my gosh, wow, their subconscious, subconscious mind likes to pattern. Subconscious mind will be like, wow, Cat, she like grew up in New York and she did this. I grew up in New York mm -hmm. and I did this. Or people could find a, a relatability yeah, to me. Sure. And then they're able to go and take those next steps and get motivated and their lives change in such a positive way. So it really just, it's one of those things where we just get to, you know, be us, do us, try our best not to let, you know, the criticisms get in the way of showing up fully. Like that's the thing too, because sometimes you could have the criticisms in the back of your head. And then when you go to show up, like you're not being fully authentically you right? right and then like that'll impact how far the content goes and the algorithms because if you feel off and you're kind of like cringing like if someone's like oh my gosh your hair looks terrible and then you get on you look at yourself and like oh does my hair look terrible <laughs> you know like it, it's one of those things where it's you know i always get to work on that and on myself and just trying to level that up within me yeah and a couple of things i want to reply to number one is i absolutely agree with that you I have gotten inspired so many times by other creators, not even necessarily in the Photoshop space, but in my opinion, success leaves clues. Yeah. So if I see that you're doing something that's working, not to say that I'm going to go start dancing on my Photoshop videos because that's not my personality, that's not me, but maybe 
whether it's, I don't know, the frequency or the way that you explain for you, to be quite honest, is the energy. So for me, looking at your stuff, I want to work on my energy. I'm probably going to deliver it different than you because we have different personalities, but that is one of the clues that your success has left behind that I want to pick up on. And I've done that with so many different people. And it's interesting to me, the people who look at someone like you and immediately it's like, why is this girl making more money than me? You know, like, why is she only working these many hours? Instead of saying, all right, fine, she is making more money than me. Let me see what is she doing that I could, you know, apply to my life so that I can get there rather than me try to take you down. That just seems insane to me. And regarding the the comments that people made, I, as I've mentioned like four times in this podcast, I've been in, in YouTube forever now. I got a comment yesterday and it said something like, oh, he's getting old <laughs> or something. I was like, oh, no, I, my, I, need a, I need a better skincare routine or something because, I mean, after a decade, you know, that I do look different. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you try to not let those comments get to you. Totally. We're at the 50 minute mark, uh, Kat, and I do want to be respectful of your time, but I do like to end the show by asking you a series of lightning round questions. These it? questions can be very, very short. It could be a one word answer. It could be a whole conversation completely up to you. If you don't want to answer it, you can just say pass. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So tell us a shocking fact about yourself that not many people know. Ooh, a shocking fact about myself. Um, well, I was a brown belt in karate and Ooh. it was funny cause I was also taking Irish step dance at the same time. So then mm-hmm. I was like doing my karate kicks, like Irish step dance kicks. And then <laughs> I was dancing Irish step dance and doing karate kicks this is when I was, when I was younger, but I went up to brown belt. That's amazing. What is the most interesting thing you've learned in the last six months? It could be professional or it could be personal. I'd say most interesting things just overall is like the development of AI. That's Mm. been something that's really been rocking my world lately and seeing how different companies are going in and integrating it. And that's really what got me inspired to like dive in full force and then Mm -hmm. just figure out ways that I could teach that to my audience and make it something that's approachable and humanize it a bit. The next question I have for you is what would you like to be remembered for? What mark do you want to leave in the world? Really inspiring people. Mm and helping people be the better version of themselves. And my goal is to, you know, before I leave the planet, just help (laughs) as many people as I possibly can and just keep growing my audience and growing my capabilities of helping people. Mm, Good. I had a feeling you're going to say something like that. Not surprising at all. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Again, it could be personal or professional. My best piece of advice is don't take advice from people who you wouldn't trade places with in that area. Because that was something I really had to work on, especially when I first started the business. I had a bunch of people who like weren't even entrepreneurs telling me how to run my business. And naturally with like the hierarchies of life and like, you know, people who are like your elders and things, like it's always important to, yes, like be respectful of anybody's opinion, right? I always thank them. But you don't have to always run with it, especially if you wouldn't trade places with them in that area. It's always important to be respectful, but I always kind of go in. I'm like, okay, thank you for that. (laughs) And just kind of do my thing. What is the worst piece of advice that somebody gave you? I mean, I've had like things like people who never owned a business tell me about Mm -hmm. like my pricing or like even like people who like don't work out and are like overweight telling me how to eat (laughs) and how to work. And I'm just like, like, I can't do this right now. I'm going to listen to my trainer, you know, like. I had someone reached out to me, again, somebody that saw me on YouTube, and at the time, this is no longer true, my website had, um, my website has downloadables for the tutorials that I do, they're free, at the time they were free as well, but the difference is that back then I had this little, little box that said, if you're, if you enjoy the tutorial, feel free to share this on Facebook or Twitter. If you don't want to, that's fine. Just click on the X. This box will go away. You can download the image. And I thought it was clear as day. And this person reaches out to me and says, hey, I realize that you do have that X that will make it go away. But let me give you a piece of advice. And he he wrote me like an essay about how businesses don't need social media to be successful. And then he went on to tell me his business accolades and how many businesses he owned or whatever. So I looked them up on LinkedIn 
and I found him. And a lot of the things he mentioned on the email were part of his LinkedIn, I'm assuming they were true, but he had been retired for about 10 years. Mm. So he's giving me business advice, having been retired, you know, a decade prior. And from what I read on his profile, had zero experience with social media, which is the business that I was in. I was a yeah. content creator, you know? So I found it to be very interesting that someone took time out of the day to tell me you're doing this wrong and let me yeah. tell you why. And these are my, this is my resume. You should listen to me. So it's always crazy how people just, I don't know, just feel like they need to tell you, especially people that don't know you. I'm sure your family and friends are actually trying to help, just they yeah, don't have yeah. the right context, but somebody that doesn't know you, that's super weird. Totally. I, I have a feeling that you're going to have the perfect answer for this one, or you may have trouble picking one. But what is your favorite quote? Ooh, that is a great question. I honestly can't even think of one in the moment. I'm trying <laughs> I knew to think. It. Like, I feel like there's just so well, many. Well, if you think of one, let me know. <laughs> yeah. What is the most difficult thing about being Cat Norton? <laughs> um, I would say... It's really like right now, it's like figuring out where to focus my energy because mm -hmm. I'm feeling super inspired in so many areas right now. Like mm -hmm. I'm going through a period, like the business like flows, you know, and I'm going through a period where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I want to create like a hundred new things. Mm -hmm. So really just kind of focusing on, okay, yeah. what's the best thing for my audience right now? And there is all the time in the world to keep making more, but you know, like zoning in on a couple things. Yeah, yeah, I would give the same answer. I've always thought that when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And my problem is that I say yes to a lot of things. <laughs> you know, so I need to definitely start saying no to some to some things. What is something that people often get wrong about you? Any misconceptions about you? Um, something I see sometimes in comments is people think like I must have come from so much money or mm. like mommy and daddy gave me everything, but I was like buried in student debt and like <laughs> did not grow up with a lot of money. So that's something where, you know, I was living in my parents' house, like buried in debt. So it, I, I did start the business myself with my own money. Sure. It didn't even cost a lot of money though. It was like a $200 business. I just needed like a ring light, you know? Right. <laughs> It was like a two hundred dollar man. Those are incredible margins, huh? If you could master any skill, what would it be and why? And it cannot be related to Excel or your work. Ooh, interesting. I would say like teleportation. Ooh, I'm that's my answer. Traveling, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, teleportation. So I'm always traveling and going different places. Like I'm, I've been living in Laguna the last couple of months, but I realized I've only been here like two of the weeks because I've been just traveling so much. Oh my God, where are you going next? So I'm going to Seattle for the Microsoft mm. MVP conference at Microsoft HQ. So we're going Ooh. up that way. Super excited. And then I'm um, going back to New York after that for a wedding. Like we're always just doo -doo -doo, bouncing around. And of course, I cannot end the podcast without asking you a couple Excel questions. Ooh. <laughs> Number one is, what is your favorite Excel feature and why? Favorite Excel feature, I would say, is the Flash Fill tool currently. Okay. It's something that consistently goes viral on social media because it is so powerful and so easy to use. Cool. And finally, if you could add any feature to Excel at all, what would it be and why? Ooh, I would say, which I've been dabbling, I think there's add-ons where you could do this type of thing, but really the ability to zoom in on the ribbon and things like that while I'm teaching would be awesome. Cool. Because when I teach and share a screen, like I want that whole area to be zoomed in. That'd be cool. Fair enough. I hope that people listening know what you're referring to because I think I said this off air, but I am so bad at Excel. And... <laughs> I forgot what I was doing, but I was doing some kind of work the other day here with my business and my fiance walks in and she kind of looks over and she goes, why aren't you doing that in Excel? And I'm like, I don't know how to use Excel. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I am. I am so bad. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today, Kat. It was amazing. You have an amazing energy. I can see why you're so successful. And thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your experiences with us. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun.